Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the PIN BBS323. This is a very interesting, very unique PIN coming out of Chinese company PIN BBS at a very reasonable price. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, I'll do some size comparisons, go over light, neutral, dislike, provide a writing sample, and then give my conclusion about this PIN. Alright, on to the size comparisons. So at the bottom here we have the PIN BBS823, the Jinhao X750, the Lamy LX in rose gold, and the Twisby 580 in lava. Um, so you can see it's in the same size range as, as these two. It is ever so slightly longer than the Lamy and slightly shorter than the Twisby. Here's an uncapped comparison. So you can see it's longer than the Jinhao X750, a slightly bit shorter than the Lamy, and just a touch shorter than the Twisby 580. It's still a very good length. Now there won't be a posted size comparison because this pen does not post. And here it is next to the number of bottles of ink that I own because I have a problem. You can see it's not nearly as large as the number of bottles of ink. Alright, on to what I like about the pen. So the very first thing is the material and design. This pen is extremely unique, it has a very unique shape, and this material is gorgeous. Uh, I'm hoping you can kind of see the chatoyance there on camera and just the depth of like some of these blues and stuff like that, especially for example right here, if I can get it to focus. You can see some of these ribbons of blue are just astounding. This pen's just absolutely beautiful. The design is very interesting. And when you uncap it, it kind of tapers back down, very similar to the tail end of the pen. So it it just flows very, very well. I also like the feel in the hand, if I can kind of get this in frame. It sits in a very comfortable position for me, where my fingers are up here near the front, and that little dip sits normally in between the webbing of my hand. So it's it's very, very, very comfortable. The nib and the flow are astounding. This is a fine nib, which is the only nib size this pen comes in, which is, you know, okay, because it, um, you can swap out the nib. We'll get back to that a little bit later. This is not wanting to focus. Please. There we go. So you can see a little bit there. There's some scroll work and things. It's, it's not very plain, it's somewhat interesting but it flows very, very well. Pretty wet for a fine nib, but if you're using decent paper, it's not gonna be a problem. It writes extremely well. The nib has a little bit of give to it, which you'll see in the writing sample. It just, it, it writes astoundingly well um, for a pen this cheap. Next thing up is the weight. It is, it's fairly balanced, but there's some weight in the back due to a deposit of acrylic that they couldn't or didn't hollow out. You can kind of see right there, that's where the converter ends, and this is a solid chunk. There's something similar in the cap, you can see it a little better in there. But it just adds a little bit of extra weight to the back along with the converter and things. And it feels very, very balanced, and I really, really like the way it, it sits in my hand with that weight. It's not too heavy, it's not nearly as heavy as a metal pen, but it's one of the heavier acrylic pens I've ever used. Back to the number 6 size nib. So this takes a Yovo number 6 size nib and feed, I believe, with a slightly different housing that you may or may not be able to swap out. I haven't had a chance to try that yet. But the actual nib and feed itself, or the nib, can be swapped out with any other number 6 size nib, which I do plan on doing because I'm not a big fan of fine nibs. But you can easily swap this out with... You know, similar to how I did on my Twisby Vac 700 with a Nemesign nib, if you'd like that. Uh, Goulet nibs will work. Edison, I believe, and a few other a few other manufacturers. So you can get some really good nib options here. Last thing, and the most impressive thing in my opinion, is the price. So this is hand-turned acrylic. There are no injection molding, nothing like that. Hand-turned. With a very good nib very interesting body. This can be eyedropper converted as well, which is another huge bonus. And this pen is between $10 and $15. Let that really sink in for a minute. 
So for the price of a Metropolitan, you can get this pen. If you're looking for something that isn't a metal bodied pen, and you prefer this gorgeous acrylic kind of look, this is completely, completely the way to go. Onto the stuff I'm kind of neutral towards. There are really only a couple of things here because this pen is so compelling. The first thing being this pen cannot post. It's not a huge deal. This pen's plenty long enough unposted, but it's impossible to post this pen. You can get it in up toward the thread start right there, but that's that's it. No going past that. That's a big deal for you, or this pen seems too short for you. Don't get it, because that's the only thing you're going to be able to do really is uncap it. You're not going to be able to post it at all. This pen uses a Lamy style converter. You cannot use Standard International with this. Again, you can eyedropper it, that's perfectly fine. So, if you know anything about Lamy converters though, you'll know that it tapers off quite a It doesn't taper off like this. Um, this one tapers off quite a bit. I have test fitted a Lamy Z24 converter. It does fit. It is very snug. I've also heard that you can use a Lamy um, cartridge. I'll show you here the, the openings are are very similar on the converter and the cartridge we have here. The only thing I would be worried about is potentially the length, but I don't imagine it being too much longer than this converter actually. No, the converter is actually slightly longer. So Lamy cartridges are A-OK, -okay, good to go. So no, it's not standard international, but Lamy's converters are pretty good. They're a little expensive, but they're pretty good, and their cartridges are nice. They hold quite a bit of ink. Just a note, this pen does come with this converter, and it also comes with an O-ring for eyedropper conversion. On to the writing sample. So again, this is the pen BBS 323. And the ink is Pilot Iroshizuku Asegao. This this ink was initially very boring to me, but it's it's very simple and it flows very well. So I found myself using it to test out new pens and make sure they were working properly. So the pen writes pretty well. It's a fairly wet flow. One thing I do find interesting, I'll go and do a reverse writing line, a normal writing line, and I'm going to do a couple different pressure variation lines because you can actually coax some line variation out of this. So you can see there it's, it's pretty interesting how much you can get out of this pen. Now it isn't super easy to flex, I'd say it's about as easy as a noodler's steel nib, but you can definitely get some out of there, and I, I find that to be very impressive, especially at this price point. On to the conclusion for this pen, buy it. Buy it right now, go on eBay, get your $10, $15, whatever it is, go and buy this pen. I really, really wish standard, you know, US retailers would carry this pen. I don't see any of them picking it up because they'll probably write it off as another Chinese copy. And BBS has some meh kind of, of pens on eBay. Not blatant ripoffs that I can see, but they have a lot of the uh, the Jin Hao style cigar shaped pens. This one really, really blew me away. The design's interesting. The material is astounding. They have a bunch of different colors. You don't have to get it in pink and blue. I actually ordered it in turquoise and black, but they were out of stock. So it was yellow or this, and I hate yellow, so this is, this is the one I got. I do actually plan on buying a duplicate of this in red, just because. You know, nib swaps, whatever. This pen is so, so amazing, guys. Seriously, buy this pen. I plan on doing a top five beginner fountain pens. This is going to be in that list, and it will not be at the bottom. It's just... It's crazy how good they got this pen for for that low of a price. The only other acrylic pen I've had like this with the chatoyants and depth and stuff was the Noodler's uh, Noodler's Conrad Acrylic, which is $40. This pen feels better than that pen. It writes better than that pen. And the piston on that one was trash, so this pen is just better to me. You have a 
you know, a larger bevy of filling options. You can certainly eye drop or convert it, which you can see the ink slosh around because it's translucent. You can see the uh, converter in there now with the knob and the little silver trim and ink. But it's just, this is so much better than the Conrad. You know, fiddling, if you're into that, this pen's just as viable of an option. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And I do have a very, very special unboxing today. Really special to me. So keep an eye out for that one. Thanks, guys.